Greetings, folks. Nice to see you. My name is Dustin Cormier, and you're watching another episode of How to Rock Astrology. Today, we're going to be talking about the Mars in Libra with the Sun in Gemini. This one's cool because there's obviously a nice trine going on here. In this particular case, by Vedic reckoning, the Sun the sun is giving Mars a very strong trine, uh, but Mars, Mars, in in the Vedic sense, like what Mars really does, is it gives an aspect to its fourth, the fourth from Mars, the seventh from Mars, and the eighth from Mars. Not so much the ninth, not really. So there's a bit of a trine there. It will still, the Mars will hit the sun a bit, but it's more about the sun hitting Mars. So this is one Mars in Libra that is well suited to be to use its Mars in Libra for noble purposes that fit the nature of the person, that fit the nature of the Gemini. So this is Gemini who sun who knows how they are, who knows how the sun the noble spirit of the self expresses through a jitteriness, a fun game playing goofy vibe, a lightness, a mental cerebral lightness and sharing with people, having lots of different things going on at the same time. And this is trying the Mars, which is ennobling the Mars to use its aggression in Libra constructively for the sake of something that's going to build on my character in the long run of things. Sun is always very good to be trying Mars. Uh, it's it ennobles the animal passions with a vital, refined, n noble spirit, the noble spirit of the atma that's in everybody, the sun that's in everyone. Uh, if you read, if you watch our Mars and Libra video, you can see the pure sexual, vital nature of Mars in Libra. Uh, essentially, what we got to there. Uh, I'm going to bring a little bit of this just to our conversation. We're going to talk about Mars and Libra a bit, and then we're going to talk about the Sun and Gemini and its erotic nature. Essentially, when Mars is in air signs, it asserts itself through expression of ideas, active communication, and energetic imagination. These are, of course, also ways which the Sun builds itself in Gemini, because Gemini is also an air sign. So these two are feeding each other. Mars, when it's in an air sign, its physical energy is stimulated by mental challenges, social activism, relationships, and new ideas, and through relating, through relationships. Which means that there's an aggression in the Libra sphere. This is why the sun really saves this Mars, because this is one Mars in Libra who knows how to choose their battles. Although they're, they will battle, They'll battle for what they think is right. This might be a person who is very sensible to historical paradigm shifts in gender equality, uh, who might see that this is, you know, we've been in a world that's very patriarchal centric where the man is the man that brings home the, the bacon and the woman is just like the 50s housewife with the cute little red scarfy thing in an apron that says like, I, I don't know, something sexist or whatever, you know, if this, this is a woman or a man, they might have, they might be sensitive to the paradigm in the present time, speak to it, but also not in a demeaning way. It's because the sun is trying the Mars here that they will pick their battles because Mars and Libra can be very pushy for an equilibrium they push for equilibrium. Mars, push. Libra, equilibrium. To at least speak to something and feel it. Uh, this is a Mars that's very neutral, and it depends on where Venus is uh, to really say if it's going to go good or bad. But the sun being trying this Mars definitely ennobles it. It ennobles the Mars to generally, when it is aggressive in relationships, it's because it's building towards the the relationship itself. Uh, if this is a really ill-placed Mars, it's still going to have the nasty quality of not getting what it, if not feeling like it's getting what it needs, and so 
trying to wrangle the people close to it to just uh, just to shake them up just to make energy come out that they can deal with because this mars deals with other people's energy instead of like its own necessarily but by dealing with others energy it deals with its own and the sun will make sure that that activity is not like overbearing and for its own sake you know it's like this mars and libra can be emotionally reactively wanting to push the pawn pieces of its immediate social reality this one will be lighter on that because Gemini and Libra, Gemini doesn't want to really do that. Gemini is more about having fun, keeping things light, which is what Mars and Libra thinks it's trying to do. Again, the trine helps that. That's, that's the whole, that's the whole point of this last four minute spiel. Now, uh, let's take a look at the, now that we've talked a bit about the nature of Mars in Libra and what it's all about, as well as the Sun in Gemini. Let's particularly look at Sun in Gemini and see what this brings to the equation. This is from Phyllis Vega, Erotic Astrology. Gemini Sun, turn-ons and turn-offs. For you, Gemini, there's no doubt that you're a major erogenous zone is the head it's located inside your head in your mind nothing turns you on faster or more completely than wit and charm and you are aroused by erotic words and clever evocative quips phone sex must have been invented by a gemini the same goes for the hot and heavy sexual banter that takes place in online chat rooms and via email the, the mercurial telecommunication is the, the language that an experience sits in is what entices the Gemini. You can have sex with somebody and it's just all primal or whatever and it's what it is. Experiences are what they are. It's the language that adds the drapery to every experience and it's the, this linguistic drapery that really turns Gemini on. It's the difference between a whatever experience and a beautiful, blissful, and enri mentally enriching one. The experience is whatever. The experience is just the experience. It's very different from Earth and even water. Fire is kind of closer to what air is like. It's the experience that counts for air and uh, for Earth and water in some ways. Uh, the physicality of the experience presents the heart for heart and earth. For, for earth and water people. For air people, it's the, your being in it. What you do, what you say, your spirit coming through that engages. And this is doubly true for Mars and Libra, of course. The Mars will actually get turned on when they see their partner moving mentally in the erotic. Although you respond amorously to tactile pleasures, it's sharing your erotic thoughts and dreams with your lover that really gets you going. Lusty words, yours or your partner's, engage your vivid imagination and inflame your libido. The Gemini nature is so changeable and mutable that it is difficult to say exactly what you will like from one sexual encounter to the next. The twins' aversion to boredom is legendary. You consider variety the most important ingredient in lovemaking and thrive on innovation and versatility. Of course, the Mars and Libra in you, thankfully, is going to help make this happen, especially because they're trying. It's a good vibe. Uh, <clears throat> and you will be and have the passion to do it, especially if Venus is well placed. If Venus is not well placed, it might be hard for this person to have the energy to excite themselves in the way that they want to be excited. You equate sex with fun, and you enjoy engaging in fantasy and role playing games. Moreover, Geminis are fantastic kissers, and they enjoy doing it. Restless and perpetually on the go, the typical Gemini has a somewhat nervous temperament. 
Sex play relaxes you. And soaking in a tub or spa with your partner prior to lovemaking helps soothe your jangled nerves. Hmm. Prior to lovemaking. Interesting. I guess it's this when... I know that Gemini often is known for having this neurotic energy, and even in the bed they can do that. Uh, but I guess it must be good for them to have like a zen moment in order for them to direct this nervous energy in a little bit more of a calm situation. Although they might like both. Again, it's the Gemini. It's going to probably want some fast-paced fuckery uh and just like fun and just like oh what are we gonna do but there's also probably there's always gonna be a bit of that nervous mental cerebral play it's like they're playing like children like that i didn't mean <laughs> i didn't mean to be like that i meant like children and that's not a bad thing at all it's uh it's the way they are i don't know if you've ever been with a gemini it can be very cute and and warm uh because there's an innocence and a play and a recreational and a lightness to it uh, but the relaxing can help jangle, unjangle the nerves. I get that. Since you were born under the most unpredictable sign in the zodiac, the only thing your lover can truly count on is that anything is possible. An adventurous lover, you long to, be, to please and be pleased. If you don't know what your partner likes, you simply ask. Lovely thing about Gemini. They'll always just find out just so you know i mean like i don't want to like blow the interpsychic love script or nothing like that but like so like what are you into <laughs> you know they'll just come right out and then just ignore that they asked you and then like when they do it it's like oh surprise i know all about you because i asked big surprise <laughs> but that's just the way they are you know some earth signs are more like mm, you'll find out you know, but Gemini is like, can I give you the list that I've prepared of all the turn-ons that I have? And the Mars and Libra, Mars and Libra will pull that back a bit, uh, actually. The Mars and Libra might be a bit more tasteful about, it's like the Mars and Libra is kind of refining this jitterbug Gemini energy. Which is good for everybody, because Gemini is just, blah, what's going on? Where am I going to put my tongue and find out new things? <laughs> Libra senses where would be a good place to find a channel for this jitterbug energy. It's still going to be the jitterbug fun energy, but there's going to be an elegance to it. If that that's their preference, that's how they would prefer to project and actively play you know we're not talking about venus or nothing here we're talking about mars especially in a woman's chart this mars and libra is going to say what she hopes to see in another man too or whatever her partner is so uh same book we're gonna have a reading of sun and gemini mars and libra when you combine them together you like being connected to another person and feel incomplete without a close relationship. Your fantasy of a loving union does not always include lots of sex. For you, a rousing debate or a spirited conversation can be as exciting as a passionate sexual encounter. There's a lightness in the mental cerebral level, really, even for Mars being in Libra. It almost prefers to dance in this place, you know? This person can get more turned on by a game of Dungeons and Dragons than they can by just banging it out for banging it out's sake. You're not comfortable with emotional intimacy, per se. It's a lot of light airiness here. Yet, on a physical level, you can be totally uninhibited and just let yourself surrender. An adventurous lover your aim is to please and be pleased. If you don't know what your partner likes in bed, you simply ask. <laughs> Same thing as we saw in Gemini. The, the Libra adds more of that. And it's adventurous, and they do like to find out what is it that you like, and I'm going to find it out and serve it to you on a silver platter. Uh, you know, so there is like that nice element to this person for sure. 
very juicy, accommodating in a certain way. Uh, less about the emotional, primal, healing, whatever of like water or, you know, they can dig the fire thing too. And earth, I'd say. Air gets along with fire in certain different ways, but they understand earth although they don't necessarily jive aesthetically depends in any case this was a juicy combination i hope you guys dug it i'm dustin cormier for how to rock astrology see you guys on the next one thanks for hanging out